we adapt quickly. I used to think it was really hard for teams to adapt in the middle of a split, even when it was the old like 10 week style or 11 uh -huh. week style from uh, from last year. But we're actually seeing a couple teams actually grow really quickly, and it's very impressive to see that. I do like seeing the success stories where challenger teams come into the LCS looking to improve by playing against LCS teams, and actually we get to see tangible improvements. Yeah, when teammate came through beating Complexity, I believe it was actually 3 2. They went 2 0, then dropped 2, then finally took game 5, and they were like super overjoyed. But teammate right now are sitting in a tie for fourth. Yes. With five games. Like, that is better than most teams, ex most people, period, expected teammate to do. These guys have a real run, not only making playoffs, but challenging these top teams. Now, we'll see if that does end up happening. The, like, 17th straight Aurelia ban against Cali Trolls <laughs> here. Team still did not want to deal with that. Zed yeah. away from Bjergsen. They've realized his split push power is quite strong. There's the LeBlanc as well. More targeted bans from TSM. Slushy not going to get his hands on that champion once again. And you mentioned, you know, Team 8's success sort of against the top teams. This is the team, this is the only team that TSM hasn't beat in the entire league. Team 8 yep. took the first matchup between these two guys. And they want to make it a clean sweep here. Well, no Slushy LeBlanc as you mentioned. No Morgana for Dodo 8 either. Team 8 keeps saying, TSM, please play the new styles. Uh-huh. <laughs> Don't go back to Bjergsen solo carrying. Don't play Zed. Don't play Ari. Yeah, just in case you were thinking of having no, Bjergsen on no. Assassin, we're going to take a few Please, of those out. Th think about Team WB. Think about IEM. Think about those champions. Team 8, they smartly banned Kelly Trolls' own Maokai away. Don't play that either. <laughs> Dyrus. <laughs> I want the 1v1 fights. The Zed, the Gragas, that's what Team 8's been good at overall. Maybe even the Rumble. We'll see what TSM want. Now, every jungler is up right here. Yeah, every jungler is up because so many bands were focused on this mid lane. And when Slushy also had success, it wasn't only on um, LeBlanc. It was also on Orianna. He had a true, very decent Orianna game. Uh, and she's a really good all-around mid lane pick, especially with so many assassins already being banned out here. Mm -hmm. So Team 8 may go back to that more team-oriented style, have Slushy on Orianna, uh, look for some more wombo -y combos. Yeah. And especially with the LeBlanc ban, though, as well, like if you wanted to play a more individualistic champion, well, the Ari's gone. Team 8 actually banned that themselves. So if they're going to keep playing Skirmish, if they're going to keep playing these sort of 1v1 all-star champions, I want to know what Slushy's going to find for himself. Team 8 recognizing all junglers are up. So they Nidalee. take two of them. Ha -ha. Yeah! <laughs> Why not? Santora, not the biggest Nidalee type player, though. Sporpus is already locked in his own Rek'Sai. Happy to play her one more time. Been very successful on that champ so far. Yeah, I really like his diligence that he has with his ward control as far as junglers go. He gets early sight stone on almost all of his junglers. Mm -hmm. uh, Rek'Sai is really good at keeping those up across the map as well. And Janna will do her part as well, speeding up the rest of the team. This is 5.4 where they changed uh, the passive a bit. And you have to move That's towards true. her to get the extra speed boost. Yeah, and she's a lot slower when W is down. We'll see if that makes much of a difference here for Team 8. And that does mean they have denied Lust Boy one extra champion. The Morgana was banned by TSM. The Janna picked away. Yeah. I was actually talking to them before the game earlier in the uh, team rooms, and I was wondering if they were going to ban away Les Boys uh, Janna, but they decided to first pick it instead. He's just, he's played so many games on it, and when they had him on Annie, the engage support rather than disengage was one of the game, one of the few games that TSM dropped. That's true, yeah, when Impulse beat them up. So we'll see. The hover on Nidalee, I don't know of any games Santorin's actually played her, though. And it's not his normal style. I do know that he was practicing it back when the craze first broke out, though. Mm -hmm. So he, he's put in the work in okay. solo queue, at least. Uh, you're right, though. He has not pulled it out uh, for the team in LCS. However, they want to bring out the different strategies. That true. doesn't mean just different champions for Bjergsen. Santorin as Champ well going to play the uh, pokey style. All right. So TSM jungle. have locked in their top three spots here. Lissandra in the mid lane for Bjergsen. He was very good at that last time he played it when they absolutely destroyed. Now, if they are going to do so much AP with a double AP plus an AP jungler, I really would like to see a, well, obviously not Corky AD, but a hard carry like Endgame, like a Jinx or something yeah. from Wild Turtle. Because uh, they definitely will need to keep that AD threat real mm -hmm. to dissuade All Team right. 8 from simply stacking magic resist on someone like Gragas. A Spirit Visage is the perfect item anyway, yeah. so he'll be happy to go that route. Well, let's see how many Abyssal Scepters will be in this game. <laughs> it could be four, could be zero. I'm going to say 
At least two. At least two. At, yeah. very, at the very I'm least two. I'm going to say at least two, unless you have like a 12 minute surrender somehow. Oriana, one and three. Slushy, pretty much most of those stats are just him. But uh, you know that one Oriana win this split is teammate over TSM. We'll see if you can replicate yep. that. The Gragas, one zero for Cali Trolls. It's an AP Gragas, by the way. Yeah, the ultimates from those two AP champions do not exactly sync up, though. No. So we'll have to see if the coordination works. I mean, you can, if you get the Orianna ult to set up a nice Gragas ultimate, then it's kind of like bowling pin strategy. <laughs> the Orianna and Gragas. Yeah, he's, Orianna will set them all up, and uh, Kali is going to knock them all down. This is a good comp if Maple Street wanted to play uh, Yasuo, by the way. Everyone can set them up. You know, <laughs> Yasuo AD carry bottom, uh, has been used a couple times uh, in my experience. However, I've never experienced success with it on my <laughs> team. <laughs> That's so. fair. I don't think it's going to happen either way, <laughs> but one can dream. Either Probably way, teammate really good at mispositioning really enemy team. Yeah, Gray is pretty He's definitely fond of the champion, plus it works with uh, AoE. I hear you want to start fights, teammate. Would you like a global stun? Interesting. Unlikely all the same. So Annie Saver does come through for TSM. Morgana banned Janna picked. Annie, not a surprise at all. Saver for a wild turtle. He's been playing the team fight utility AD carries a fair bit here. TSM, I mean, very much about the 5v5 with the fallback pattern of Santorin throws javelins. Yeah, and they do have uh, the AoE from uh, AD threat. So it's not the uh, it's it's not the Jinx, really scary end game hyper carry, but so much mid game area of effect uh, attack damage from Saver definitely will keep you honest. Make you build a bit of armor. Huh, interesting that he goes for Lucian, actually. With every other AD carry up on the table, Maple Street defaults to him. Now, it is pretty hard to spell Shield Piercing Light, though you can. Uh, but overall, it's going to make him very mobile. I mean, Lucian Jan is really good at getting into and out of fights, so maybe yeah. they can dodge away from TSM's attempted engages. But I got to see what teammate actually want to do with this team composition. Cali Trolls can duel. Corbus and Slushy can go make plays. They've got decent delivery for Shockwaves. It is going to be, you know, Rek'Sai has, is, an, is an okay delivery, and Gragas can as well body slam in. Uh, but I feel like Slushy, the first time he had so much success, he was setting up even most of his own Shockwaves. Yeah, he so, was. Uh, we'll see if he's able to carry the ball himself. Yeah, he's primarily queuing off of people, just letting him get it in, and then plot it off from the side, no one can flash out, no big deal. We're going to see what happens in this one, though. That's yeah, the sound, right? It's, it's actually close to the sound it effect is. of Command Attack, it actually. Is. Can you do the uh, Command Dissonance, though? That one's rough. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a broken radio. Oh, the coaches walk off screen, and we're going to have ourselves a game shortly as the players load up. Mm -hmm. TSM continuing the trend of seeing, hey, people playing team fight comps. That's what we're going to play as well. It's not just Bjergsen, it's the whole team. Yeah. And teammate, they've got the Orion in there. Kind Back of to their similar. old ways. TSM Back to their old ways. Fight. Very, very intimidating. LeBlanc. Uh, gone, so that's what's gonna happen. Now, guys at home, who do you think is gonna rack up this win? Tweet hashtag TSM winner, hashtag T8 win to at LOL Esports. We will be tracking the vote once we are in game. TSM, they are in first place. They're probably gonna remain in first place, but if they want it, they gotta win here and show that they're worth it in Poland. Team 8 have the chance to move on up the standings with this game. TSM, they are at 10 wins right now, putting them one above Cloud9, putting them one above CLG, and two above Liquid and everyone else in fourth. Yep. Team 8, though, they're one of those teams in fourth. They are not far away. Looking to climb standings for the playoffs. Sorry, three away from TSM. First, fourth, or three games apart. Those models are almost exactly the same size as far as uh, top lane champions go. Pretty even matchup there. Cali Trolls is able to get the first scratch onto Dyrus. Right. Scratch the paint of Rumble. Thankfully, it's not uh, Super Galaxy, so it's like cruddy paint anyway. It's like really easy to fix. Yeah. You know, it's junkyard <laughs> paint. Cali Trolls, by the way, has no sound right now, so we're going to QA that real quick. Shouldn't be too long. Now, Jet bet that it was only a few seconds last time around. He was wrong. Jet doesn't get a say anymore. He left the desk. That's why we replaced him. Yeah. Don't worry, Freak. You know I would never leave you. Aw, oh, thank you, Kobe. Because when you need me, I'll be there for you. <laughs> when it begins to pour, I'll be there for you. You're so sweet, Kobe. <laughs> thank you very much for the serenade. 
as we get Cali Trill suited up here in this one. So I, I actually, the thing is, I'm overall not really sold on teammates' comp. I, I'm just yeah, not, it is a bit wonky. I'm isn't not it? sure what they're <laughs> trying to do. Like, so by the way, Jana has still an like atrociously low win rate in the NALCS. There's only been like 30-ish games. The sample size isn't great. Uh -huh. It's like a 38% win rate champion. A lot of the wins come from TSN though. Yeah, because it's all less boy from play. actually less boy winning with it. Yeah. So I kind of liked. That's why I liked the uh, takeaway there. However, the follow-up picks. Uh, were a bit confusing. It just seemed a little bit disjointed. Yeah. I mean, you say you, you have two champions that do have dashes to sort of get good ball placement, but mm -hmm. uh, especially the Gragas and Oriana, unless they pull off the bowling pin strategy, yeah, it you just, don't usually see those together. Right. It just feels like the engaged teams tend to actually do better. That As much as people say the turrets are really strong, well, you just fight for dragons and barons, and those fights still seem to work out. Yeah, especially if you're facing a team that has Nidalee on it, which is essentially one champion poke squad there, is yeah. all you need. Mm -hmm. And then they also have, you know, Rumble and Silver on top of this. Uh, doesn't seem like Teammate um, have the tools to deal with TSM's composition, which me seems a bit more put together. But we will see, uh, because yeah. the possibility for outplay is always there. Yeah, and, absolutely. And Cali Trolls has really been a huge fan of this Gragas. Yeah, and he had a great score with it last time, his last Gragas game, 7-2 and 7 against Gamsu, who's been one of the stronger top winners so far in the NALCS. He's, mm -hmm. That's a guy who had a lot of good results, but all the same, it was a good performance, and we'll see. Dyrus has been, I would say, hit and miss in his top lane. He's normally left 1v3 for a large portion of the game, and TSM says, well, look, we're going to learn to practice to gank these other lanes. But if Dyrus is left alone, and Kelly Trolls does get a farm lead, like, Dyrus building MR is, like, almost an awkward build path because you, like, want the flat pen items that aren't Abyssal. You, like, want the Zonias. And this leaves you bullyable by a Gragas. So there's always the chance of, as you mentioned, the outplay. Uh -huh. As you mentioned, sort of the 1v1 matchups. We, and you mentioned also teammate going back to the old school style. Hey, Cali Trolls can, like, go win teammate the game. <laughs> Easy, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what people were saying when uh, teammate first got into here into the LCS. They mm -hmm. were thinking it was going to be, hey, Cali Trolls, go win the game. And that yeah. was going to be what the whole team was about. But they've branched out. They've grown so much since those days. They have. You know, see if they can pull it off. The other thing about Dyrus is he's been playing the game for so long, and he has sort of this pattern. He, he rarely has a game where he gets you know, heavily ganked uh, and dies, as we just saw. Yeah. And then he almost always fixes those issues for the next game. He does not forget a beating. Dyrus That's has true. taken quite a few beatings uh, in League of Legends mm -hmm. in his days, but he remembers all of them, and he learns from them. So, Yeah, he's one of the very few players in North American LCS who was at the Season 1 World Championship. Yes. Like, him and Doublelift, I think, are the only ones remaining with that title at this point here. In NA, of course, like, Yellow Star works for EU and things like that, but certainly, yeah, he's been around. A lot of experience on him. He always credits his adaptability as the reason he is still on the number one team in North America right now. And as we go around and talk about players, by the way, we're looking at maybe one minute left on this pause. Yeah. We're thinking that's going to be fixed up very, very soon here. And in fact, I think the players are saying ready right now. So way less than one minute. Um, <laughs> but some of the players we don't talk about almost at all are Maple and Dodo of Team 8. And they're certainly not the playmakers of the team. They, they get very little recognition, but they've been fairly consistent in their results. I see pretty much positive scorelines for Maple practically every single game, win or loss. I see literally one game in his history where he's got more deaths than kills. Once in 13 games. All right. Audio issue fixed. Game back on. Some defensive wards. Pretty much nothing to speak of. So we're going to have fairly, fairly standard uh, teams here and fairly standard setup with normal lanes. Usually that keys you into thinking that, ooh, never mind. The duo lane actually swapping up here as they, s I think they got a peak of Dyrus. No, it's a totally normal 4 1 0 lane matchup, bro. Ah, uh, yes. Completely standard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Porpoise going to start top side, though. And Still play. only defensive wards, and they will get the lane swap. I want to see what jungle paths actually come out here. So, Cali Trolls can go for Wolves at level one. He has learned. Body slam for that privilege. Yeah. Top laners nowadays, if you're not going to start a camp, 
you really need to be getting something tremendous out of it as far as your entire team comp is concerned. Uh, because going into top lane without that extra golden experience is really, really difficult in the current stage of the game. Kali going to do his best here. Might have to check a potion. Yeah, hit the little one leash Tried twice. Yeah, all right. He really didn't want to have to chug a potion, um, but goes okay. for it. And yeah, he's fine. He's later to lane than he wants to be, though. Yeah. This, these extra four auto attacks here are not what he wanted. By the way, mid lane, though, the first gank okay. by Lust Boy. Slushy, nice and low. Burns his flash already. Definitely, out of Lust Boy. definitely one of the more effective level one uh, support ganks that we've seen. Uh, it is fairly common in the two versus one lane swap scenario mm -hmm. that we see those, but rarely do you see not only the summoner, but also forcing him out of lane. So that's actually a huge, huge bonus for Bjergsen. Forcing Slushy back to base as well as taking down his flash. Yeah. Essentially a late flash, meaning he takes all that damage. Bjerg's now going to have a gigantic lead. You notice he's trying to freeze the wave, and in fact, there are more enemy minions than allies, so he will actually just deny a ton of experience and gold from Slushy. Yeah, definitely not the start you want against Team Solo mid. Who, even though they are diversifying, Bjergsen a ridiculous threat on this team, and Santorin already Attracted because there's, oh my God. there's no flash on the mid laner. I don't know why he wouldn't approach after the spear throw. But maybe not enough confidence in his Nidalee play. Didn't feel like he could follow up on that on the flashless Oriana. Yeah, so instead, we watch as the duo laners are 2v1ing against the top laners. Right now, Kali Troll's farming what he can with barrels. Of course, the extra level two from starting at the wolf camp helping him a bit. Thyros a bit slow on the Harpoons, misses two. Sticking around here in lane though. Still getting experience, still getting gold. He'll probably call Santorin over uh, if that lane gets out of hand because it is pressing back against Team 8 right now. Dyrus though, pushing up in the lane, has to start worrying about a gank from Rek'Sai. And Santorin does not look to be headed top, so. Wow. That puts Dyrus in a fairly difficult situation. Speaking of difficult situations, Jason. another recall from Slushy. Just for a second, Doran's ring. Oof. So it's another way he's going to lose under his turret. It's a crap ton of golden experience lost by this Orianna. Easily going to be slower to level 6. Bjergsen gets a decent aggressive ward just over the wall. Very, very uh, predictable jungler movement here, though. Right, knock up, there's the jump over. Dyrus will flash, but the knock up comes in anyway. Surprise! 1v3 on Dyrus, the kill goes to Maple. I really, I really thought he was going to back off when it passed mid, midway on top. Or call up Nidalee, who was on the top side, to shove it in the lane, try and bounce it. Yeah. There were so many moves for TSM to make there, and they, they just kind of played it fairly lazy. Yeah, he had the Scuttler killed by Santora not long ago, so there's only one gank route, but hey! He went through the, tribe Yeah, you're, I snuck right in. Your one gank root is like the most common, <laughs> most effective That's gank fair. root. That's fair. So, rough start here again for Dyrus. So, maybe it will be that Cali type of game if they meet back up. Cali, though, not having the easiest time himself. Yeah, that man is also denied quite a bit. Maple Street already has enough money for a BF sort if they recall here. TSM pushing the wave at about six minutes in. This is kind of like the earliest you can really form in it and get good progress. But Cali Troll is done by Lost Boy. The Javelin comes in, the Flash, Santorin gets the kill. Cali Troll's also overstaying. He has no reason to be there. Top laner for top laner. This time, Santorin does have the confidence to ball by his spear because set up with a beautiful stun from Lost Boy. What a combo. Yeah, top laner for top laner. Both of them go down, so back to even footing here. Slushy recalled again. This time for a uh, forbidden idol here. Just repeated backs. This Orianna now down 13 minions, about to be more than that. And the, the experience is really what's going to cost him. Uh, Lissandra getting to level 6 first. So she's not even 5 yet. Yeah, and Bjergsen is level 6 now. Level 6 versus level 4 mid laner. Still no flash, and it's Lissandra. Santorin should absolutely make a beeline for mid lane and destroy him before the flash comes back up. Oh, Slushy, he's not even running magic with his glyphs. He's got just the base 30 amount oh, of the ball on his he head. He could be a dead man right Look now. Look at this freeze. Lissandra is the, basically the best at setting up ganks. Yep. 
the control mage. Porpoise, though, also knows that the best move for Centauran would be mid, so comes for the counter gank. Uh, support start roaming at this stage of the game because we just had bottom lane's recall, and everybody populates the mid lane. All right, support and jungler both there for each team. Bjergsen, though he had the wave on his side of the river, he's trying to keep it there. You can see how far away Slushy has to farm. He knows he is just a Lissandra ult away from death if Nidalee's around. And Lust Boy right now, due to this kind of pressure, is happy to kill away a lot of these wards. And even though, you know, both bottom lanes recall at the same time, both junglers came to the bottom side of the map, the edge in mid lane pressure is what allows TSM to invade on this blue side jungle. Both of the supports came back with extra wards to place. However, TSM, because they have so much power, centered around the mid lane matchup are the ones who get to place their wards deep inside the enemy jungle. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be the ones who get to dictate the early stages of this game. And especially on a jungle champion like Nidalee, who's so mobile and can have such an early impact, uh, should be Santorin with the early influence. Porpoise, though, just yeah. fine, taking out his red. Does get to level 6 very quickly, and Rek'Sai ultimate available, can jump right back out on the Rift. Yeah, but speaking of level 6 quickly, by the way, Dyrus is a full level above Kali Trolls. Uh, after the lane swap shenanigans, after they both died once, well, Dyrus found more experience. A full level up right now, 6 to 5, still holding that advantage. And it means that, you know, that Kali Trolls win condition, I don't really think it's going to be there for a while. Yeah. Double Doran's ring can try to bully out, but I don't see him making any easy headway in that matchup. Corpus will try to secure his own blue buff. And actually, TSM bullying them around. Kali Trolls is six here. Gets some damage on a Dyrus. Does he want to ult him back in? Got minions. He does so indeed, but Dyrus now unsilenced. Pops Equalizer. Decent damage on a Kali. Clears the wave. He's going to try anyway. Lands the Q. Good bit of burst. 100 health left. Dyrus answers back. Top lane fights got so much less exciting when all top laners have to take teleport out. There's no ignites for either one. Uh, so, yeah, Dyrus is going to escape there. However, his team grabbed Dragon because of their deep wards inside the blue jungle. And in Italy, extremely quick at taking the Dragon early. Sivir wants to pop ultimate and run on Maple Street. However, he backs at the perfect time. And Maple's got money for a pickaxe. And with the 20 CS lead, he's actually going to have that spike a little bit before Wild Turtle. And maybe this teammate bottom lane can win. You saw the top, the top lane brawl. That was close. Kali, though, without a lot of money to buy many items, might not be able to really keep pushing Dyrus around. Dyrus TP's back in, which means that's nice and safe. Kali does the same. No dragon up, so whatever. But it's haunting guys versus not a Sheen. So <laughs> winning the fight or not, Dyrus has better items. I like the classification. We'll see, though. Kali definitely looking to throw his weight around in this lane. And Rek'Sai going to come up and help, it looks like. Because Porpoise already counter-jungled that side. Doubt he's going to return in there. Good seen by the wards, though. Pops back to his own side of the jungle. Okay. Interesting here. Is Turtle freezing down? Nah, he's pushing down bottom. Yeah, interestingly, the top lane turret, by the way, did not die in the whole lane swap shenanigans. Teammate never actually finished that turret off. They killed Dyrus, but they didn't kill the turret. So it's actually gold, just kind of not there for teammates, a thousand gold lead largely from that turret kill of TSM. Yeah, literally all of TSM's outer turrets are all at 100% health right now. Wow. Slushy flashes for the Liss ulti. That's a cool then I'd take. Loses all his health from a Javelin. The accuracy so far from Santorin. He hasn't thrown many shots, but when he does throw the spears, he makes them count. Yeah, they're practically free throws there, just... <laughs> High percentage shots, nice ward kill by TSM, the auto reset helping. Practice makes perfect for free throws, so... Santorin with the same philosophy on Nidalee. Putting in his practice time in solo queue beforehand. See if they can actually gain anything out of this jungle pressure, though. Doesn't look like they'll be able to pick anyone. And not finding the pink ward either. Good rotation over to mid, though. Oh, Kodo just warded that. I think he's using it now. Yeah, down it goes, but mid lane under pressure with four. You see how far back teammate are forced to play. Just the ward and lane control game right now. Definitely going TSM's way. Yeah, uh, Slushy's so behind. He's even have a, having a trouble wave clearing here with Orianna. Uh, and while Dodo can lend the shield to the turret, they're definitely struggling. Uh, as the early grouping from uh, Jungle Nidalee with her jungle item combined already 
provides a lot of poke. Way more than you're used to seeing around the 11, 12 minute mark. And Cali Trolls, we talk about items and everything. Roaned mid for a... Literally, he got a Trinket Ward down and lost four minions in the top lane wave. He's just like giving Dyrus advantages now at this point, who's getting now boots of speed, another Amp Tome, just still scaling up. Cali Trolls has a long way to go till he's relevant in this game, unfortunately, for Team 8 fans here. And TSM continue to press their advantages. They're getting turret damage. They're getting wards up. Yeah, the wards, repeatedly. the wards are going to start playing a role here, too, because you, it's only a matter of time between a Sivir plus Annie lane roaming around in your jungle before they catch somebody out. You have to be very, very careful, especially if Bjergsen ever leaves mid lane and he starts to roam around with Lissandra. Uh, the picks, definitely, definitely scary here from TSM. So far, though, Bjergsen has been concentrating on keeping Slushy down. Mm -hmm. Just increasing his minion lead, trying to deny experience. He's done a good job of it so far. Two levels, the difference. So, interesting. So a quick lane swap by TSM. They've put Dyrus bot lane here. They've put Bjergsen top, actually. Oh, he wants that solo kill. They put that dual lane mid. Oh, yeah, he's got a gigantic a item lead. AD carry is the perfect target for a fed mid laner. And he's coming up on level 11. A level 2 Lissandra ultimate would absolutely annihilate Maple Street. Looks like they are going to swing up with multiple people, though, and try to poke down, pressure this turret once again. Last boy wow. here with the stun. Santorin's there, too. 3v1. Well, Maple Street, this is what Dyrus feels like every single game. Lissel comes in. Santorin comes shows Porpus, up. Though. Bjergsen, he's got to be careful. Porpoise does want this one. Slow down. He's not going to miss. He does, but he's going to trade his life, I think. No, Dodo shows up, but Timbers oh. turns it around. Ulti by Dodo. Monsoon does not catch. The Javelin sure does. TSM 3-1 in that fight. Yeah, that's going to be the top turret as well. They can even continue pressuring here. At the same time, Slushy's trying to make the best of the situation and shove a minion wave into the turret. But this is the first turret damage that they've gotten all game long, and he will not be able to take it, uh, as we see Les Boy and Santorin quickly moving down. Turtle's got his back as well. well will Kali be enough to dissuade them? Goes into Wild Turtle. This is a bit aggressive. Ulta misses. Easy yeah, turret shots. Whoa, Careful, buddy. Cali Trolls. Cali Trolls. One more auto has to flash away. Wild Turtle is ignited. There's a shockwave in Team 8. Bait in Wild Turtle. Oh. <laughs> nope. All right. Misplays and baits. The line is uh, blurred. That's, that's fair. <laughs> we'll we'll that's, that's see fair. what TSM can get after this. Uh, because they are, they're only left with their solo lanes, actually. Just Bjergsen and Dyrus, very late to the party here in mid lane. Crucially, though, a lot of ultimates are missing for Dragon. Teleports are up, yeah, but mid laners both missing them. Yeah, Teleports both missing them. While Dyrus just, missing his. He just used the Rumble ultimate to look for a 400 health Gragas. Yeah. There's no way you're going to kill kill off that uh, Kali Trolls. But no Rumble Equalizer, and Crab Control for Team 8 looks right. good for them. Yeah, Kali Trolls walks top of him. He's got Teleport. It's pretty safe. Maple Street, by the way, Bloodthirster first. So really, Lifesteal Focus was, does not want to die to the Wombo combo. Kali Trolls spotted by Bjergsen. Root, Slow's not going to land for much. Kali Trolls trying to get away, but this is going to be a uh -oh. kill for Bjergsen. Takes him down 1v1 as Payment of Dragon. Payment received for Team 8. They do cash in on the dragon. So the Bloodthirster first. Now we've seen this sometimes in conjunction with Janna, you know, to stack up really big shields and try and push down turrets early. They're so far behind in turrets though. Yeah. Um, to get that back. Right now he's working on one in the bottom lane, uh, but Darius definitely wants to stop his efforts at the moment. And Bloodthirster or not, Darius does have decent wave clear here on Rumble. He's already got a Leandries as well. Pretty early clip for that. No Sork shoes, but who cares? Takes the minion waves down pretty quickly. Dyrus keeping his turrets more or less afloat here. Very little turret pressure, as you were saying, by teammate. TSM holding a three and a half thousand gold lead. Two turrets to zero, five kills to three. We know tier two turrets are pretty hard to kill, but TSM still getting plenty around this map so far. Let's see if what they decide to do, too, because grouping up uh, is definitely in TSM's favor as well. 
So teammate have to be very, very careful about where they pick their fight. They really do need a number advantage uh, to pull out a win. Kali Trolls bringing two people to the top side is a good start to that because he does have Teleport as well. Maple Street down here with Dyrus. If they get a too entangled... Uh, well, never mind. Rek'Sai Ultimate will not be one of the tools that teammate can use. Ooh. He uses the Rek'Sai Ultimate to get back out onto the field quicker so that he can take that spear. Yeah. And then chuck a potion and heal it back up. Nice. No biggie. Mid lane under fire. She not expect him to hit all the time. Man, I really... How do you miss a Prey Seeker on a stationary minion? <laughs> um, you click in the wrong spot. That's how I do it. A plus investigative journalism. <laughs> it's easy. TSM, though, happy to wait here. They've got a Rod of Ages first incoming for Santorin, it looks like. After his jungle, I don't know. Bjergsen gonna solo Bjergsen him again. Bjergsen coming for Kali Trolls. E over. They are the CC. Jumps There's up. The... Yeah. Ignite on. That's a kill. Nicely done. Bjergsen again. 3, 1, and 1. TSM playing the way TSM used to. Bjergsen's Lissandra Bjergsen is... solo killing people? Yeah. That's <laughs> pretty much the normal TSM style. They have adapted Lissandra into him. He's only played that as of kind of recently. Yeah. That was a quick pickup for TSM. And the other thing is, we have seen people misplay the Lissandra combo, right? Yeah. Sure. Ring of Frost right after their ultimates for very little damage. Yeah. Bjergsen, though, wastes the entire duration, uh, even for Kali Trolls to uh, try and make his getaway before layering. Uh, and basically, you just want to get the maximum number of Qs. So, yeah. another good uh, assassination there from Bjergsen. And Kali Trolls really hurting right now. Bjergsen really is quite a few unforced errors. Yeah, honestly, 0-3 oh, and 1, not a great start for him. But to talk about Bjergsen, though, he really is going for that sort of bursty style, right? Sork shoes instead of yeah. uh, the cooldown boots. Also, Alacrity enchant, yeah, to get around the map and find those picks even more, more frequently. Bjergsen really trying to make these plays to set TSM up. Yeah, plus the vision game for TSM started early on. Mm -hmm. Right after the first back of supports, the lane swap back, immediately Lust Boy takes advantage of their mid lane power, gets really deep wards down, and I don't think teammate have had a ward on TSM's side of the jungle the entire game. Yeah, I doubt that. And a good pink ward line ensures that never happens in the future either. TSM doing a good job of letting teammates sit in their own base, but never coming into TSM's side. 6-3, 4,000 gold, the lead keeps growing. Team Silamid have yet to kill the mid lane outer turret thanks to Slushy's camping there. But uh, that's kind of okay. They've grouped up now, and he just backed. So there's a wave to work with. If Santorin comes over to the mid lane, they can finally grab that mid turret they're looking for. The last of the outers falling. Jungle Ward's already in place on the bottom side. Prep for Dragon a full minute and a half in advance. Yeah. TSM very easily can stack Dragons up. They have such a huge advantage. Well, they're going to stack up blue buffs right now. Looks like that's going to be plenty clean. The deep ward control helping them quite a bit and making that happen. Bjergsen level 13 with a blue buff here, enjoying nice CDR. See Porpoise sees wards in his own jungle with his Raptor buff. He just knows there's pretty much nowhere he can go without being spotted. Yeah, he's definitely going to smite Raptor on cooldown, even though he has Chilling Smite. Uh, the value that you get from that Raptor camp clear is essential when you're playing against a team especially with Jungle Nidalee uh, and Lissandra as powerful as she is right now. Ward battles. Time and again, we're seeing Pink Ward trade for Green Ward and Lust Boy just replaces it. It's like, yeah, okay. Lust Boy gets the last laugh. He also, speaking of, you know, boot enchants, got a really early uh, distortion boot enchant, so flash engages. He will not hesitate to go for those, mm -hmm. especially if Wild Turtle is in the area. Such good chase from TSM possible yeah. with this team. Well, this is the build Lustboy does every single time. Look at that Forbidden Idol he's got in the inventory. That is the yep. key component of Talisman of Ascension, which he's gone for almost every anti game. Stops on Spell Thiefs, gets the Distortion Mobies, gets the Sight Stone, and then Talisman of Ascension start fights all the time. I like this build a lot. I really think it's very, very strong. I like that Lustboy does it. All right, well, here's their dragon. Arrived right on time. Vision line that we mentioned before. Too much for teammate to penetrate. 
Just try and bide their time. Hopefully soak up enough gold to find an advantageous numbers advantage in a skirmish. Yeah. And it just feels like TSM able to play the comp the way they want. Dyros holds on to the side. He's really getting done. Nothing really happens to him. Bjergsen actually given one of the long lanes to try to pick up solo kills, does so. The TSM rest of that roster just sits there in one of the contested lanes and just farms. And Wild Turtle actually built ACS lead back over Maple despite having lost early out. When they swap back, there was an early lead for the Lucian Janna lane, except those guys aren't getting turret pressure. They're not blowing these lanes. This Bloodthirst now just means a power trough. Maple, ew, going for a Trinity for a second. <laughs> means he's going to have no damage in team fights. Well, at this moment, he's got a decent amount of flat attack damage and a little bit of burst from Sheen. Yeah. So, like, he can kill turrets, but we've still not seen turrets go down. Yeah. Teammate aren't going to get that opportunity when they're pushed up to their base the whole time. I feel like Maple really needs team fight power to get them outside of their own base. Yeah. Well, it is, it is regardless of how they go about it, going to be a rough mid game here for teammate because they're so far down. At the moment, TSM, uh, they had Les Boy and Santorin walking through Rush and using Bjergsen as bait. The only problem is Bjergsen's so fearsome that no one wants to move up <laughs> in his lane anyway, so it's hard yeah. to use him as bait. It's like using a giant shark as your bait. I was going to say lion, but lion. I think yours makes more sense. Since, right. you know, bait Both, is Because it's fish. aquatic. <laughs> yeah. Bait is actually universal. You can, you can use That's bait true. for land animals as well. Like for a bear or something. Or a donut for humans. Yep. <laughs> that baits me a lot. Thankfully, none had, like... Claws around them, so I like it. Never really punished me. I'm. I will be sure to set up a freak trap <laughs> <laughs> next week. LCS. Oh, we don't have that. We uh, kind of beats this next weekend, actually. True. So no Alex. That's even better. You'll forget about the bit, the trap. <laughs> I'll set up a freak trap with a donut in the middle, <laughs> or a book of puns. Just kidding. I've already read them all. Oh, Dodo's read that one. Bjergsen unable to find the pick, but does burn the flash for nothing. And that's the second at least straight buff steal by TSM. They took the blue not long ago on the Bjergsen. They stole the red on a wild turtle. And it just goes to show you how much control TSM has. That they can get the guy who wants the buff there in time to claim it. Yeah. And also, you know, they've rotated their uh, wards over to the top side of the jungle. After they took Dragon, the yeah. they're not going to wait for the next spawn, not to keep their wards up on that side of the jungle. So they replace all the wards, uh, put them up on this red buff style, where Baron resides, and they will oh, look at that, that as bait, and he stood toast. still, and Porpoise is revealed by the trinket, forced <laughs> to jump away. He still has flash. That was nice. Every time people make that play, it reminds me of Jurassic Park, <laughs> where he's trying to hide in the porta potty for the T-Rex. That didn't work out for him. Nope. <laughs> this one might, though. Shockwave teleport in for Cali Trolls as well. Dyrus is not going to get to the wall in time. Ignite secures the kill. Slushy. Wow. 2 0. That was a solo play. They didn't even have to burn the teleport. Cali Trolls uh, didn't look like he got a, uh, an assist for that, even. So they didn't even need the numbers advantage. Here uh -oh, comes Maple. the Rex Scream, though. And the bait that TS. Uh, they got a signal as Santorin moved into the. Oh! Ooh. Tibbers misses Lost Boy, one hit from dead. Back he goes, Slushy at half health though. Tibber ulti means TSM will retreat. Yeah. Abort mission after that. They definitely failed the initiation. So that, that means, means teammate. Crit. Yeah. Dyrus still dead. He does have teleport, so there is a small possibility of re-engage, but without Silver Ultimate, without Flash or Tibbers from Annie. It's all up to Bjergsen. Oh, Bjergsen goes in for Maple Street. Shields come in. Janna saves him. And Bjergsen's now alone. Pops in. He's to buy some time. Slushy flashes out. There's the equalizer. It means one. It means two. Actually, a trade back and forth. Two for one. The overall fight still comes out for TSM, though. Oh. All right. So pressure on the turret as well as teammate have to back from the chunking that they received. Dyrus teleport did come in. Equalizer follow up was there for Bjergsen's initiation. A little bit forced. Yeah. But he was able to pull it off. He had to burn everything for it. But TSM able to grab uh, the turret afterwards. So definitely worth. And that just goes to show how far ahead they are at this point. Even fumbling their Sivir and Annie combo. Still able to go for the re-engage with uh, Bjergsen having his flash up. And beautiful targeting here from Bjergsen going straight for Maple. His Bloodthirster shield was already down from the previous engagement. And there's the equalizer from Darius coming in to cut off the rest of the team, allowing TSM to secure the kill on Kali. 
Yeah. Unfortunately for them, the uh, Cali Troll's explosive cask only knocked back Wild Turtle. Mm. As, like, Lissandra is like, I'm Zonia's, whatever, wait for the team anyway. And seems like not enough time was bought. Bjergsen did lose his life for that fight, but a two for one still good. And TSM sitting three kills and five and a half thousand gold up is a pretty good place to be right now for TSM fans. They've knocked down mid lane tier two, so even that line of turrets is falling. Dragon three for TSM up in 23 seconds. They have pretty good wards over that already. Every time I check, it's like, yeah, well, there's already vision. They've already prepared for Dragon. No yeah. big deal. They swap their vision control, depending on which side they are going to populate. Dragon coming back up. They readjust. Now, they are trying to work out the kinks as well before Katowice. We mentioned, you know, Cloud9 are flying right out after uh, their LCS game. TSM also shortly following them. Going to prepare as well. They have had quite a few hiccups the last few weeks, you know, testing a bunch of different strategies in the LCS. Santorin now getting his handle on the jungle Nidalee. Good score line uh, for him so far, but hasn't run into many obstacles that he's had to overcome so far this game. That's true. Not a tough obstacle course. More like Guts, less like American Ninja Warrior. <laughs> I've never seen Guts, so that one goes right over my head, but... You haven't seen Guts? No. Ninja Warrior is good. <laughs> Actually, I don't know if Guts is on air anymore. I might have just dated myself too badly. Like the, was it the Legend of the Hidden Temple? That's is another that one. one with the uh, colors. Yeah. Now that is a good one. Only older people will get that one though, so maybe we should stop. <laughs> <laughs> Dating okay. ourselves. No, inside jokes are the best. I want like really obscure chemistry puns now. <laughs> All right. We'll work on it. What's an Australian's favorite element? Gold. <laughs> Australian uh, ones are always good as well. Well, let's see. TSM focusing up on the top side as they have a giant wave down bottom. And teammate have not responded to this giant wave. So it's just going to crash into the bottom turret while TSM pressure mid and top. Trying to pull them across the map. Take advantage of Kali. Last few seconds where he does not have teleport. And for their efforts, they gain some damage under this uh, turret. Dodo gets there in time to shield, though. Yeah. So no gigantic damage down, but still a little bit chipped off. TSM, though, all over this top lane jungle. Just nothing teammate can do to push them out. Slushi's 2-0-1 on Orianna, but you can see how much harder it is to make plays on Ori than LeBlanc, so his lead not meaning much. Whereas Bjergsen just kind of was crushing the mid-game by himself. Yeah, and you mentioned that. He even managed to pull off a solo kill with Orianna. Yeah. Very rare oh, no. to see that happen. Well, ulti comes off. Porpoise tanky, but takes a lot of damage. Now, can they do enough? Equalizer means no. One for nothing, but they Whoa. trade back. Lustboy falls. Jungler for support. A lot of ulties burned. Yeah, the shockwave annihilates Lustboy there. But as you said, it is the jungler for support, so a teammate not going to have one of those frontline bodies and not going to have the magic resistance aura, which is key versus TSM. So they have to give ground. Yeah, truly concerning. So uh, eight ults were burned in that fight. Only Dodo and Santorin hold their ults here. Maple Street wants to duel and actually forces Bjergsen back. The Bloodthirster lifesteal, meaning he wins that fight. It's the skirmishing sort of build here for... Yep. Lucian, trying to turn him into a bruiser. That's true, yeah. 1900 health plus a 260 point Bloodthirster shield. He also did run full MR glyph, so Fortitude Magic Resist. He's like a 2400 health AD carry. It's not bad. Yeah, and with, you know, Kali going full damage for his Gragas build, pretty much. Lichbane into Athenes. Definitely going to have a lot of mixed sources to worry about. No, we do have the first Abyssal on the map. Kali Trolls did pick that up. We promised there would be at least two. Yep. So, well, hopefully somebody has. That blasting wand from Bjergsen is probably a uh, death cap. Yeah. We we may be, may be wrong on that one. Well, we'll see. No bets were made, though. It's true. No hats will be lost. I don't know, man. Keep it up, and uh, Zyrene's going to cast for you next. Oh, man, you're really running through your co-casters. <laughs> you're going to be out of them. Jat <laughs> left you after one game. <laughs> Engage comes in though, Dodo's got to be careful. Equalizer is on, but they actually blow up the Nidalee first. One for one, all the same. Jungler for support the other way. Maple goes in, looks for Bjergsen. Wild Turtle trades him back. Double kill for Sivir. Porpoise falls as well. 
Lost Boy picking one up, 3-1 TSM. They're still on the hunt here, Slushy. Bjergsen's trying to keep him interested, and Wild uh -oh. Turtle is going deep. He's trying to cut him off, 300 what, point shield. What do you think of the percentage chance that Wild Turtle takes turret hits and just goes for the dive? Ah, uh, he waits for the Tibbers. Yeah, it's gonna be Slushy dying. Kill to Dyrus. Not even the assist for Lust for a Wild Turtle. Where did Cali run off to? I guess he recalled there somewhere in the mid lane or something. 4 1 overall TSA means they look at Baron? They look at Baron. Uh, no, they started Baron. They're on top of a ward, though. They do get spotted. Their sweeper will not likely see this. Oh, no. The Oracles means he does spot it after all, and that's going to be a Baron attempt without much interference. Now, Dragonfly ults from top lane. Gragas still packs a decent punch if you combo the barrels. He's going to try. And Bjergsen's so low, he might even he get kills it. with it! Ooh. Okay, Nidalee does pick it up, but some low health bars. Cali Trolls dies to Wild Turtle, though, in all the mix. And out goes TSM. Five kills in a row for one death. Oh, you don't. And a Baron TSM. Yep. That's going to be a pretty big swing here. All right, so they ward him out, and then TSM just decided to charge it. <laughs> they force this one, jump into the middle, get Slushy. Slushy doesn't do anything for this entire fight because Bjergsen they were able to initiate on him and then zone him. So Maple was the main carry there. And with uh -oh. that turnaround, huge, huge re-engagement from TSM able to take out Maple. Yeah, Slushy, I don't think he got off any no. damage at all that entire fight. And he had just shielded himself, so yeah. he couldn't put it on Maple. He was like walking around with Command Protect on him. And the uh, Maple Street dive really ill-fated there. All right, Baron buff, TSM, 10,000 gold lead. Check, check, check. Yep. Time to rush down some turrets. All right, tier two in the bot lane gonna fall without much contest. Dragon up in five seconds, and yeah, okay, TSM. Why not claim it? Dragon four, minion damage pressure now gonna be added to the mix. They already run fast, they already kill turrets. Also, no contest. just a stepping stone for number five. And a coolly recall. Not Wild Turtle, though. He's too wild for that. He's gonna stay out in the field. That's why he's trying to catch up to him. Come back here! Hey, that is four bonus gold per minion if you let me wait. Let's bug gets a bit. He has completed uh, his Talisman, by the way, that you're looking at. Yeah. And, and it looks like he's even gonna go for a Righteous Glory on top of it. Every game. It's the same build every single game. Where the boy. Engage on Engage on Engage. Yep. Now, Talisman, and technically you can use it for disengage as well. Yeah. But uh, it's not usually the way Les Boy runs. <laughs> and hey, despite running for the entire game, 2 out of 9, only one death on him. He's been part of 11 of his team's kills. And that was where he just barely got clipped by the end of the shockwave on the retreat. Yeah. All right, they've got him cornered. Turtle pressuring up mid, and he's got minions with him. So they Turtle should be able to single-handedly take this thing down. Oh, Slushy! Base gate. Thank goodness for the space gates. Doesn't matter, though. They didn't react to mid at all. Top lane tier 2 is just a bait. That's an inhibitor going down. Those are typically hard to kill. TSM does not have good sieging power. But the rotational play means they take it down just the same. Yeah, they've, they've got away bot lane. Too much of a lead here for TSM. Bjergsen zones back the team, giving Wild Turtle even more time. The culling doesn't mean enough. Turtle's got to be smart with Spell Shield to knock it cast in. He's fine. Two inhibitor turrets now dead. One inhibitor itself already gone. TSM. 15. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, Shockwave misses. Slushy the target. He's going to go down. One for zero. Dota gets a knockback, but it doesn't even matter. Porpoise drops as well. This could be TSM winning it right here, right now. 36 minutes, double inhibitor kill. There's a wave coming in from mid. There's a wave coming in from bot. Here comes the Nexus turret fights. Teammate 3v5. Can they do anything at all? Nexus turret number one goes down. Nexus turret number two. And Maple Street as well under fire. That's going to be TSM holding on to first place. Two wins in a row this week. A spot on NA is secured. Now they've got to look to winning something internationally. Yes. Fairly strong fashion. Both Cloud9 and TSM look much better today than yesterday. Yep. Morale boosts right before they head onto the plane to fly over to Poland. And we can see just another day at the office smiles, but a win TSM would have expected. Now the close game against Winterfox yesterday 
might have shattered their confidence just a little bit. This one seemed to be in control. They played standard TSM style. Let Bjergsen do cool things. <laughs> Let Lustboy get wards down, control the objectives. Pretty much standard stuff here. Now, Team 8 are temporarily out of fourth place with that loss. They'll wait for the results of Team Liquid and Team Impulse later today to see if they still stand there. But they know that Gravity's right on their heels one game back, I believe. Not a lot of room to go. Playoff spots very closely contested. Team 8 still have Cloud9 and CLG in their future games, but also Winter Fox and Gravity. So you feel like Team 8, the playoff race with four games to go, I think in control of their destiny, especially because they can knock down those teams Yes, uh, at 7th and 8th. Definitely a much better feeling than having to rely on the outcomes of other teams' games. Up next, we are going to see that clash that you mentioned between Team Liquid and Team Impulse, mm -hmm. which will have big implications for Team 8. Yeah, one's going to time for fifth, one's going to be alone in fourth place afterwards. And you got to say, who are we going to battle? Heck, who's, as you move on farther as well, who's going to be your first round playoff match if you make it there as well? So, okay. We'll watch teammates' fights later on. We'll watch the later the uh, other games with playoff implications uh, later on today. TSM, they're done for the week. They're off the LCS for two weeks yeah. now. They're in first place for sure. They are one and a half games above CLG, I believe. CLG looking hot on their heels. Yeah, sure. Definitely do uh, winning their games in dominating fashion. Yeah. So. And CLG play coast. You expect them to, to stay within that one game there. Those are the two teams looking at first round buys here in the playoffs. TSM, it's good to be able to, like, get to experiment, and then still stay in first place all the same. <laughs> uh, and, and you heard Bjergsen say, like, yeah, we've got like one or two styles that are good. Yeah. They added Lissandra in the back half of the split. That's obviously worked. I think he's 2-0 in that champion so far. Yeah. The Lissandra adaptation is good. The Cassiopeia stuff, the last Liquid when they did it, that wasn't too great. You know, what other experiments have worked here? It seems like in the last game of the LCS, they said, okay, we'll try the list experiment one more time. Make sure that is good. Mm -hmm. All right, well, time to go international, see if it works out for them. Tried their hand at split pushing a little bit. A little bit rocky, a little bit rusty getting yeah. back into it yesterday. Um, Just said, yeah. But Bjergsen did get some good exercise, and he mm -hmm. should be confident split pushing once again. Yeah. And we'll see if that style does work out for TSM. But for an inside story on that match, send it down to Riv for a word with TSM's Jungler. Thank you very much, Freaking Kobe. Fantastic cast so far. I am joined by Santor Santorin here on the stage, winning side for Team Solo Mid. You guys are still staying at the top. And a little birdie told me back on the analyst desk, it was Zyrene, that you had actually played in Italy quite a bit before she had her change, and the team just didn't actually let you bring it out. What kind of brought on the idea that Nidalee was going to be the next new thing? Um, I don't really know. I felt like Nidalee was just like a fun pick, and it was like fun in solo queue, and you can basically like carry the game alone. So I just felt like it was a really strong pick already before the changes. So when they changed the Nilly, it was like, it just became way stronger. And is that kind of always your mentality with junglers? You're, you're looking for that next jungler that somebody might not have thought would be the next big thing? Um, a bit, but I don't really want to like innovate too much because I feel like sometimes people innovate too much and then the champions they bring out, they're not good at all, but they just like try to make them good. And I just want to like try, find a few champs that are good and try bringing them out. All right, and Santorin, the first showing for you at San Jose obviously wasn't that, uh, wasn't that good. Yeah. Going to Katowice now, you kind of get to go back home for a little bit, the home continent. How are you feeling about that? How's the team feeling about Katowice? Um, I feel pretty good about Katowice. Yesterday we played really <laughs> sloppy and we pretty much like played really, really bad. So we felt really bad yesterday, but today we kind of stepped up and played the game we want to play. So I feel pretty good going into Katowice. All right, and a final question. Obviously, Team WE for you guys first, but there's a whole slew of good competition over at Katowice. How are you guys feeling overall about that tournament? Um, I feel that we can, we can kind of, I think we can still get first, but G-Tag is going to be really, really a tough opponent because they haven't lost a single match yet and they look really dominating. And we have had these slobby games, but if we play our game the way we want to play it, then I think we can take them. All right, best of luck in the preparation, the travel, and congrats on the win. We're going to throw it to the analyst desk to break down that game. Thank you, Riv. And Nidalee, as he pointed out, one of many AP champions that found their way onto TSM's team comp there. Yeah. If you include the support, four AP relying on only Wild Turtle for that attack damage. And the thing when you run a team composition like that is you really need your AD carry to do well. And Wild Turtle did well this game, not only in the pick of Sivir to be able to do a lot of AoE physical damage, because no one could build any magic resist, or sorry, any armor because of the four AP champions. 
he had he was kind of set up for success. But if he would have been shut down, the team comp would have fallen apart. But TSM played it right. Yeah, and we saw Bjergsen, though, also making plays on that Lissandra, actually being the person to shut down Cali Trolls. You yeah. know, I think I, I think it was at some point Kobe said, or no, actually it was you, Jet. We were talking back here, and you're like, hey, I keep looking up going, oh, Dyrus is doing really well against yeah. Cali Trolls, and then realizing that it was actually a mid Lissandra that was roaming to the side lanes and getting these solo kills. So, you know, nice to see them, as we've pointed out, bringing out some new picks, but performing well on them going into IEM this coming week. Yeah, you see the teammate composition as well. This is a composition that really relies on Cali Trolls getting the Lich Bane as fast as possible and then split pushing because he's kind of kind of has a dis synergy with everybody else on the comp. And it's usually a good idea when you're against teammate to camp Slushy early, make sure he doesn't get off the ground and dominate the mid game because then he's very confident and makes plays. And then you go camp Cali and keep him down because he's the shot caller of the team. And if you can put him on tilt, then you really kind of make teammate look like this disorganized mess. Well, and they did what look happened. a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> it's exactly yeah, I was like, happened. and that's exactly what happened. Yeah, they did look like a bit of a disorganized mess. To your point, though, in the mid lane, Slushy has to be given a little bit of credit. We've, I mean, we've said week huh. in and week out that he's actually performing very well as an individual. Here, he gets his flash blown very early on in the game in that solo lane. He comes back, he's forced to back again, but does so safely and only manages to be behind by about 20 CS without a death coming out of lane. Yeah, yeah. and I don't think this is... Uh, do or die situation for Team 8. The fact that they're able to come out of this week one and one when they're playing Team Liquid and TSM can be looked at as a success. It wasn't a bunch of dejected faces on Team 8's side after the game. I think they're going to be completely fine. They just ran into a pretty solid TSM team here. Yeah, they're having a ton of fun too. There was actually an interview that I watched with Travis and Slushy, and they were saying that all they do is play for fun for the most part. When they're scrimming, they're having a ton of fun. Dodo has to reel them in and say, stop trolling you guys. You're having a little too much fun. But regardless of whether they win or lose, they're a team that's always looking forward and always looking to just add something else and just add a new element to their play style. So they're constantly improving and they're having a ton of fun doing it. I which think I think you, is beautiful. You see a little bit of that in their play style. And it's it, it, it becomes unbridled sometimes, right? And we noti and then we notice that in individual misplays in a couple team fights. Maple Street going a little bit hard, a little bit too hard in the paint there on Lucian, not necessarily yeah. recognizing the amount of damage he could do. I need deal. to talk about that play. <laughs> Just for Maple Street. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. because Maple Street has been a guy, he made that big Graves play in their impulse win, but he's ultimately a guy who usually doesn't seem to do much in a game. We're always talking about Porpoise, Cali, Slushy, and Maple's just playing safe. It was a really poor play, and, and here's why. It didn't understand like he understood his damage. It didn't look like he understood his damage. He was a Trinity Force Bloodthirster guy. I can understand Lucian dashing in with IEPD, hoping he gets some crits and guns blazing, knock him down. You don't have much crit in a Bloodthirster Trinity Force build. He should know his damage output because he wasn't even close to getting that kill on Lissandra, and it was basically a suicide that he flashed into. Yep. Yeah, and, and I think with that team, when you look at the fact that they have Cali Trolls and uh, Slushy and then Porpoise stepping up huge, you've got enough individual playmakers. They really just need Maple Street to fall into that. You know, when the team does well, I'll be there as the supportive back line. And, and, you know, he is successful in that role and for him to kind of hold on to that. So we'll look to see whether or not they can kind of rein in a little bit of those uh, unbridled moments. But as you st stated, Jed, I don't think there's any cause for concern for teammate. A very yeah. solid week for them. Solid victory for TSM moving into IEM. Now, coming up, we have a battle for fourth place between Team Liquid and Impulse. The former SKT T1 teammates, Piglet and Impact, say they have mixed emotions about facing each other in competitive play. We <laughs> 뭔지 뭔가 모르게 그냥 좀어 뭔가 아쉽고 그냥 막 뭔가 만약에 죽일 타이밍에 오, 나오면은 막안 죽일 수도 있다는 막 그런 생각도 들어요. 막 너무 치지 마 죽일 거. <웃음> <웃음> 당연히 뻥이고요. 어 그냥 뭔가 좀 많이 아쉬워요. Man. Nice. I mean, it's nice to see the camaraderie between those two guys. It's, it must be also very nice to have each other within the region yeah. uh, as, through, as a support system. They went through so much together. You can see that even though it was known that they weren't the closest members of SK Telecom, you can tell that bond runs pretty deep. Yeah, and absolutely. Well, keep it tuned right here. When we come back, we'll see how that matchup plays out. You're watching the NALCS.
Hi, di hi, di hi, di ho, everybody. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Wahoo! He's not gonna miss. He does, but he's gonna trade his life, I think. No, Dodo shows up, but Timbers Whoa. turns it around. Shields come in. Janna saves him, and Bjergsen's now alone. Pops in his device. Sometimes Slushy flashes out. There's the equalizer. It means one. It means two. Dumb, dumb, can dumb, I dumb, eat? Dumb, can dumb, I eat? Dumb, yeah, I'm, yeah. Gonna eat? I'm gonna eat. I'm gonna eat. Rexa, Rexa, Rexa. Kali, Kali. Can't worry. Can't worry. Can't worry. I'm dead. All right, we're fine. We're fine. One for one. One for one. Jungler for support the other way. Maple goes in, looks for Bjergsen. Wild Turtle trades him back. Double kill for Sivir. Porpoise falls as well. That's going to be TSM holding on to first place.